Hello, this is Michael Adams, and it's old religion dystopia, knowing versus belief. And I have a new guest today. Her name is Laura Maxwell. And I'm looking forward to this. Um, Laura, she's got a YouTube channel. It's called Laura Maxwell X Spiritualist. And you'll find that in the information box when I post this on um, YouTube. And also then she's got, the, um, I guess it's like, would that be a blog? Is that what we would call that? Um, let me open this up here. Sorry for the delay. Our Spiritual Quest. And I will, you could just look at Our Spiritual Quest altogether.com and that will be in the information box so also she's got a radio show and apparently you got something new going on don't you uh, laura you got uh with uh eternal uh radio yeah um i've been doing the show just over three years now and um this is actually the very final season of the show but at the end of it, I will be announcing a, a new project uh, that the Lord has opened up. So it's not uh, a complete end to the show as such. <laughs> yeah, I imagine you're a very popular person, so you, you're, you're wanted. You're quite. You become quite uh, a demand, haven't you? I mean, a lot of people want to talk to you. Um, how long have you been doing the uh, interview part of it? Um, that started. 2009 um, in a way it was kind of bizarre because I suppose most folks who you know end up speaking on, on radio TV or, or writing for magazines and so on they tend to, they maybe usually kind of start out by perhaps going around speaking in, in churches first and you know um, conferences and local events but for me it kind of went the opposite way, um, the Lord just seemed to put me right into TV, actually, right from the start, which was uh, a bit alarming for a, a young, you know, a young lass from Glasgow. <laughs> but um, I guess that's just the way he, he, he wanted to do it. So it, it does seem, I suppose in that way, it, it, it can certainly reach more people but with, with the message of uh, the gospel and about... Um, you know, demonic matters that, that, that people need help with. Um, so, yeah, I'm totally honoured and, and really in awe of what God has done, quite frankly. I imagine. I understand mm -hmm. completely. So, mm -hmm. as you can tell, folks, she doesn't come from my parts. She, she comes from Glasgow. She's Scottish. So, and yep. before we get going here, we, uh, uh, I would like to pray and uh, invite the God's Holy Spirit into this conversation. So, yes. Almighty God, the true and living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God that Moses knew, the God that Daniel knew, the God and Father of our, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I pray unto you in Jesus' name, God, that you bless this show. And this interview, that it will go out to those people who need to hear this. And that they will come to the realization of the gospel and of the wonderful truth of, our, of you, our, and our Lord and Savior. Dear God, please bless us with your Holy Spirit and, um, and bless Laura and her endeavors and her works to serve you. And um, may this also be a blessing for you, God, in the name of Jesus, Amen. Amen. All right, so yeah, where do we go from here? Uh, interesting ex-spiritualist. You know, I used to live in England a long time oh. ago. You know, I'm uh -huh. half a century old now, so it's it's been a while. But um, <laughs> back in the uh, late '80s, '90s, I lived in um, I don't know, quite a few parts of England. Never never did get to Scotland though. Never. Aww. You never, never did. No, and I also never went to Wales, and I never went to Ireland. But I, Aww. I spent a lot of time northern London, and then 
and uh-huh. Essex and Suffolk and then all the way up to like Nottingham and that kind of area. So yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the eastern <laughs> central part of England. So one mm-hmm. thing I noticed now when I originally went there, I this is when I I grew up a Mormon and I went on a mission and um, and the, but then I met my ex wife there and that's a whole other story right there. But so mm-hmm. I stayed on for a little while until. Believe it or not, I got deported from England. So, <laughs> <laughs> but one thing I one thing I noticed was that there was a lot of spiritualist churches. Just in fact, in yeah. England, I don't know if it's like that, and and up there where you're in Glasgow, but there was more spiritual churches than I think there was actually any other type. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Was, yeah, I would say that's that's probably fair to say that with Scotland too. Which I find that fascinating because, you know, it's like, you know, where I've come, you know, in the Great Lakes region of uh, North America in the state of Ohio, <laughs> uh, uh, there, there, there is uh, a couple uh, spiritual churches, but mm-hmm. I didn't find out about them until 20 years later. And it is not, they're totally different, totally yeah. different. But I see that same spirit, if you will, mm-hmm. of spiritualism. Mm-hmm coming here and sure. and in waves and uh, of course i ended up getting involved in uh the quote-unquote new age movement and i was involved with uh, unity church and i did all the things that a lot of folks did you know the doing the secret and um oh whatever all the all the other things that you do and got mm-hmm. myself involved in I've discovered later to be Luciferianism and witchcraft, and I had no idea that's what it was all about. <laughs> sure, but, yeah, yeah. So for you, I mean, here we got this thing, uh, spiritual, uh, being a spiritualist. And, uh, you know, that's this is an interesting topic in its own right. Um, how do you even define that? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, well, sure. what? Yeah, I know you've you shared this story many a time already now, but um, maybe you could do it again. Is uh, some you know like when it comes to what what did what did it mean? Now, so you grew up a spiritualist. Your mom was into it as well, mm-hmm. and I know you guys had a terrible experiences with the demonic realm because of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you know. I would say that, that basically to define it, a, a spiritualist is basically someone who believes um, that they can contact spirits of the dead, dead family members, um, or if you want, use the word ghosts. Um, and really, I, I suppose, it, certainly the practices and the beliefs of Spiritualism vary depending on the culture, depending on the country, um, and even the generation, because there's different types of spiritualism really all around the world. Um, and as we know by looking at, you know, what archaeologists tell us and so on, many cultures across the world, all down the ages, have had some form of spirit communication, one form or another, whether it's ancestral worship and so on, and um, many cultures have believed they could be contacted by spirits, not just of the dead, but, you know, some kind of spirit beings, spirit guides, if you like, some kind of, um, even like an archangel type of figure. So it's always been around, um, and, um, yeah, often, so my form of it, I would probably call it the kind of a European New Age type of spiritualism that we were into. But for example, you will have folks, you know, in indigenous areas like uh, shamans and whether it be, you know, deepest Africa or, you know, who have, for example, they will mix their spiritualist beliefs and practices with, for example, maybe voodoo or, you know, some other type of uh, religion and practice, so it certainly varies depending on the culture uh, that the folks live in, but certainly as I say, for my mother and I, it was more of the uh, New Age type of spiritualism 
um, which was definitely has always has been actually quite popular in the UK. And as you say, we do tend to have it's perhaps a bit more um, established in a sense because there will literally be what we call spiritualist churches uh, rather than just folks going along to a seance at a, you know, at a hall, a community hall, or just going to a ghost hunting uh, event. It's actually established churches that obviously operate through the week um, and have members who, who attend it. For, for the seances, yeah. Yeah, I found that very interesting and uh, uh, shocking, for me at least, that there were actually buildings, <laughs> churches, mm-hmm. uh, and then, you know, they, and they right there, and, you know, they, they don't even hide it. It's right there, you know, that <laughs> spiritual well, church so and so, and spiritual church this and that, and so it's like, you sure. know, is it really that popular? Um, and of course, I was a young man at the time, so I couldn't really mm-hmm. register at the time what it, the significance of it was. Mm-hmm. Um, well, yeah, they, they definitely wouldn't hide it because, you know, they wouldn't feel any need to hide it. But when I was a spiritualist myself and others, um, we were happy to, to broadcast this because, of course, we felt this was a very good thing and, and that it helped humanity and so on. So uh, why not advertise you know, we certainly didn't consider it to be anything dark or, you know, like witchcraft or anything like that. We felt it was a very, very good uh, religion. So, yeah, but the more advertising for it, the better we would feel. Yeah, you, and it's interesting, you also mentioned witchcraft. And that's the first thing as you were talking about stuff like shamanism and, and all sorts. I mean, isn't it basically a... Witchcraft? I mean, is it uh, uh, maybe a watered down version of it? Uh, beginning stages of it? I don't know. What? what how do you? How do you? Uh-huh. How, how would you describe it? Because I mean, there are people that are blatant witches, mm-hmm. but I don't well, think spiritualists yeah. don't necessarily call themselves or see themselves as witches, yeah. but yet they're practicing witchcraft. Well, I, you know, yeah. Back in the day, we wouldn't have classed ourselves as. Uh, witches or occultists or anything like that. Um, in fact, we um, would see we wouldn't even call it white witchcraft. You know, it wouldn't, witchcraft wouldn't be a name we would use. Uh, as I say, we just felt that we were communicating with spirits. So the term we tend to use would be spiritualist or psychic or medium or channeler. Um, we just didn't think there was nothing about it that we would have classed as being witchcraft. We weren't into, um, you know, various deities that, that, that witches can be into. We weren't into spell work or anything like that. But, you know, times change and, and certainly it does seem that now more uh, spiritualists and channelers are, and so on will be more willing to uh, take on aspects of things like witchcraft, wicca, and so on. And as I said, depending on the country and the culture, people do mix and match and always have done their spiritual beliefs, but we didn't at that time. Uh, No, we didn't regard ourselves as witches or anything like that. But I would say when you do, stepping back from that now, looking back, certainly I would actually class it under the same umbrella um, simply because those practices are occultic. Um, and even back in the day, if, if, if my mother and I, for example, were to go to a New Age shop and buy a book, say a dictionary, um, about spiritual practices, for example, you know, there would be words in there like hypnosis or meditation or, or yoga or channeling or whatever, but they would be listed in amongst a whole lot of other occult activities too. So... If even the, the occultists themselves, you know, produce a book and it lists some of the practices you are doing, then actually you are doing the occult even if you don't see it as being that. Um, so, yeah, and even like you say, you can be involved in New Age things, you can be involved in Luciferianism even, you can be involved in some dark stuff and you don't even realise it's dark whilst you're doing it. Um, 
And often it's not until you start trying to come out of it, things, weird things begin to happen. Or after you've left it and looked back on it, you realise that the depths of the darkness that you just weren't aware of at the time. This is so true, isn't it? I mean, it's like mm-hmm. uh, the deception that I was under. I mean, I even, you know, here I grew up in a Mormon when the church is actually named the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter States. Mm-hmm. And of course, I knew nothing about Jesus. I know who I did. I mean, Jesus and Satan or Lucifer were uh, brothers, right? <laughs> That's how screwed mm-hmm. up almost. But yeah. um, um, but part of that problem too, I noticed, is a lot of, with these cults and in these occultic movements, these um, false religions, uh, especially uh, Western society culture, is that they. Piece they 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 cherry pick the verses, and mm-hmm. so they don't they don't use a lot of verses out of the Bible, but the ones they use are usually it's part of a verse, you know, as above or you know some or they manipulate something you know, out of it. And mm-hmm. um, what would be a good one? Uh, something like ask and you ask and you shall receive type of thing mentality, mm-hmm. you know, using. Pretty much using God as a genie in a bottle. Yeah. Yeah, right? And just about, just, he's really just about, you know, and a lot of these religions really are just about self, if we're honest mm-hmm. about it. It's about yeah. what I can get out of life, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how I can improve myself, you know, the, the self improvement type programs um, and all of that. And, you know, you, you can see how the motive of these things. Certainly seems good. Who doesn't want to try and improve himself as a human being? Um, but yeah, when you're doing it with spirits um, and spiritual practices that are not from Jesus Christ, you're actually opening a door to things that, quite frankly, you don't always understand or fully appreciate until you maybe run into problems and start to think about it a lot more deeply. Oh yeah, and definitely the problem part was something we will talk about. But mm-hmm. I know, you know, I know for me it was like um, I got involved in it through, of all things, AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. At one time, I had a uh, well, I was a drunk for about three years, and bitter and angry, and mm-hmm. about stuff. And so, uh, and this is after my mission and all that kind of stuff, and the divorce and all that, and. I didn't know how to deal with life, and so, anyways, so you do yeah. the, 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 you know, the big book and the 12 steps, and mm-hmm. then you start, you know, looking back now, the connections between the Jesuits and New Age philosophy and this whole thing about self-help and about, you know, a God of your understanding, and that, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's, um, it, it, it led to me getting involved in, in the New Age stuff, and then, you know, oh gosh, what's that one book, The Christ? Uh, what's that one book that everyone did? Anyways, why did I, I just had it, I knew I should have wrote it down. We studied mm-hmm. that stupid book, and that book is really demonic as all get out. And then also like The Secret, and didn't realize at all that that was witchcraft, and Mm-hmm. You know, you start getting the things that you want, and um, but you know, and it all seems great at the time, but the, at, the, mm-hmm. at the end of all of it, it was all just a lot of pain and suffering. Is what it was for me and other people around me. Mm-hmm. And um, it seems to be the common uh, theme to all this. Now, ultimately, in the end of the day, as you mature. Uh, and you start to understand the truth about what's going on and who Jesus is, and he uh, he gets a hold of you and you become one of his. And then you're able to look back at it and say, "Wow, I was really the whole time messing with demons." Mm-hmm. And, yeah, uh, yeah, and a lot of people, you know, listening to this probably think that is utter nonsense. They are crazy. And how dare they say that? But you know we do have reason to say that, and that's why we are um, we are sharing it. 
Um, yeah, because it, these things do work. There is spiritual power, there is supernatural power. People get results from these things, so of course they continue with it and think it's okay um, until, as you and I said, you perhaps run into problems. So let's go back into time and let's talk about what happened to you guys and how you, um, what God allowed to happen to free you from this ensnarement, this trap of false religion and basically, in a nutshell, demon worship. <laughs> so, uh, how did, how, yeah. how, what happened to you? I mean, what was the, you know, what was the, the beginning and the the genesis of you kind of waking up to the reality that uh, uh, you're messing with the wrong thing here. Yeah. Uh, Well, again, you know, we wouldn't have said it was demon worship and it wasn't, we didn't think it was demons and we didn't, you know, bow down and worship them as such, but we certainly communicated with beings that we thought were good that turned out to be demons, but, um, but, you know, that came later when we discovered that, of course, that was a great shock. Um, so, so yeah, basically, you know, um, my mother had always been interested in the paranormal, the supernatural, so-called ghosts, and uh, basically would cherry-pick and pick and choose things from different religions, really, that, that, that she was interested in, and uh, try to yeah, I tried to, to go by those things and try to become, you know, a more spiritual person. Um, and, uh, of course, I was the same. And um, whilst I was a child, though, she didn't delve into things too much. Also, you know, she was still married to my dad then, and he wasn't interested in anything like that, so she didn't pursue it too much around him. But when they, they divorced... Um, she really felt that type of freedom to just explore more fully. And um, she was, she did have some psychic experiences and all that type of thing. Uh, she sometimes, you know, felt that the that, that ghosts of, of the dead, dead people basically were contacting her, speaking to her, giving her messages for people and so on. And so she would go to the library and get books by mediums, some of the well-known mediums at the time in, in, in London, England, and, you know, read up on it, watch TV programs to do with anything, you know, supernatural. And, yeah, one day she was basically just out in the park walking the dogs when a local medium, who she'd never met before, but he was in the park and he approached her and he he just came right out and said, you know, I can see that you are gifted. I can see that you um, are a, a medium, basically. And would you like to come to our spiritualist church in Glasgow and learn how to further develop your gifts? Uh, so, of course, she jumped at the chance of this and started going there right away. And she went weekly. And eventually, yeah, I started going too because I was very interested myself and that became um, a way of life for us and we went there weekly and it was you know just set out like a church um, you would go in the building there'd be the reception room there would be the, the the main room that looked like a church you know the seats were all there there was a platform that the mediums would uh, go up there and stand on give a message read something maybe even read a bit from the bible uh, and then they would pray in a sense, they would ask um, ask for God's protection and then they would pray and allow spirits to be channeled through them that would then basically give messages to people in the in the in the church and um, basically a seance and there would be also psychic healing involved. So of course people could be healed and the, and the healings were real, the miracles are you know, miracles are that do work. Um, of course, I'll question the source of that miracle, really, but yeah, and um, we would go to Sunday, of course, would be like the special service, and you'd go there instead of going to a Christian church, and there would be uh, classes, you know, like um, training, uh, they would call it an open circle, 
and you would go there and, and learn how to uh, channel spirits, how to tune into spirit guides, meditate, and of course, yoga and meditation were always very recommended to everyone because they were believed to open you to spirits. And of course, now yoga and meditation is so common everywhere, folks don't realise that it really was the occultists that would use yoga and meditation uh, in the earlier days. So again, it does open spiritual doors. And really, yeah, we, we, we did that for years. And uh, when you say years, I mean, how long did you did you do it? Do you mind me asking? Uh, I guess about ten, around about ten, maybe a little bit longer than ten. My mother was into it longer than I was because I would be a kind of preteen age, and it was I left it all when I was about twenty six. So maybe I got into it when I was about thirteen, fourteen. I can't remember exactly, but she certainly was in it a bit longer than me, um, just because I was like, you know, I was a young girl still going to school and so on. Um, but but yeah, I was definitely wanting to become a medium like my mum. That was something that um, I really had my heart set on, as did she. It's, it's, it's interesting. You really had your heart. <laughs> so. Um... The reason I say it's interesting is because it's just like, you know, how many people are like, you know, what do you want to do? I want to be a medium. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? It, well, at least my cult, you know, here in America, the culture of America, which, you know, it's only a couple steps behind uh, Britain itself. Um, uh, you know, it's, you know, what are you going to do? You know, well, I'm going to be a nurse or I'm going to be a doctor or I'm going to be a lawyer or whatever, construction <laughs> worker. And you don't hear too often some and say, yeah. well, I want to be a medium. So that's well, very I, interesting. It is interesting, but, you know, I think there's a lot of people like that. And, you know, when you, when you remember that from the, the, the modern spiritualist movement and the teachings, of, of course, uh, from theosophy and the famous... She was named the, the mother of the New Age movement, Madame Helena Blavatsky, right. in the 1800s and so on. Any kind of a spiritualist movement will often want people to, yeah, get, get a career, you know, uh, go for the, the job that, that, you, that you want to do. If, if you, you know, you want to be a nurse or you feel that you, you should be a musician or, or, or whatever, do that, but have your spiritualism there, you know, speak to people in the workplace, speak to people you come across in your career, and uh, show them, prove to them spiritualism is real, and get them on board, and uh, lovingly reach out to them, because the more people that join with us, the more it will benefit the whole planet. Uh, so, and again, we would not have felt we were, there was anything ominous about that. We felt it was a great thing to get more people on board that will benefit the planet, the whole spiritual... Basically, the more people we can get into spirit communication, that we can get into New Age, will bring this wonderful utopia, this, this age of Aquarius upon the whole planet and it will involve all, all these spirit guides and aliens and all these spirits that, that want the human race to evolve and become more loving, more at peace and all of that, and it requires us to, yeah, be a spiritualist in the workplace if you're a nurse or, or whatever. So that was certainly my, you know, I, I thought maybe I'll become an artist, maybe I'll become a psychologist. I don't know, but whatever I become, I'm certainly going to be a medium alongside it. It is so interesting to me. Um, but then again, you know, I was a Mormon and, what were you going to do? I'm going to go on a Mormon mission. <laughs> in my mm -hmm. part of, uh, of the uh, United States, there's very few Mormons. So it's, in a lot of ways, you know, uh, there's uh, so many connections there, too, uh, with the New Age and Mormonism itself. Um, yeah. So 10 years is a long time, and so you develop a lot of friendships and community and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So what happens to start leading to this, you know, breaking away from because you know this this you know when you break you know i don't know about for you but from god had to work a long time 
and have me go through quite a bit to finally really get to the point of falling on my knees and crying out to Jesus for salvation. Um, mm-hmm. In the meantime, I had, I had a lot of heartache and pain. And, I, and yeah, all the people of the past are, are not part of my life anymore. So, And I imagine the same was for you. Uh, mm-hmm. What were the things that happened to first, you know, like what were the next things that happened as far as uh, you guys breaking away from the spiritualist mm-hmm. your community? And yeah. um, how how was that for you? Because you know this yeah. is something you know. Is, uh, what I'm hoping too, Laura, is mm-hmm. that that people that hear this, uh, that some of those po- folks are going to be in that situation, and you know they, you know, sim- sympathetic and empathetic voices uh, would probably be good for them. You know what I mean? Because you know, sure, sure. like you said, yeah. you know, a lot of people uh-huh. have good intentions. They really do. Uh, mm-hmm. they're, they're wrong, yeah. but. I was terribly wrong about just about everything. I can't believe how ignorant I was about everything, but it's time. Uh, you know, you look back and you go, man, was I really that person? Wow. Anyways, mm-hmm. um, yeah, what, yeah, what, yeah. What, what happened? Tell, tell us, you know, what was it like losing your community? What was what happened to cause you to start to, to uh-huh. separate, you know? Well, interesting that, you know, you mentioned Mormonism because whilst – I was still a, a spiritualist. One day, a, a couple of Mormon gentlemen came to my door. Uh, by this time, I was now living with um, my husband and our young child. Uh, I'd left my mother's house, obviously. And, um, yeah, they came to the door and wanted to talk to me, you know, about Mormonism. So I was polite and listened and and uh, then I shared, well, I've actually got my own beliefs, thank you, you know. And they said, oh, what's that? And I said, spiritualism and, uh, you know, talking to the dead and so on. And they both looked appalled. And one guy actually said to me, oh, no, you've been deceived. That's Satan. That's demons you're talking to. Well, do you know, I was absolutely broken hearted. I was polite to the man, but, you know, I said, well, I don't agree with you. And goodbye. I was devastated. I thought, how could anyone think for a start, you know, Satan's even real, what nonsense. And then how could they think my dear, you know, spirit friends and, and family are, 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 are actually demons in disguise? What a load of nonsense. And I was really quite upset at this. But it did make a big impact on me, obviously, because I think that kind of stayed at the back of my mind when was it, things what, started I, going wrong. You know, what you made say... me think, hmm. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I just wanted. Did you say uh-huh. this is the first time that you actually heard that? That that, that 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 possibility. I mean, or took it seriously, or is it the first time you ever heard it? I mean, the, the concept. I don't, that, yeah, I don't think it probably wasn't the first time I'd heard it, um, but it was the first time anyone had said it to my face, and uh, in such a way, I could see the man was genuinely appalled, and that shook me because I thought, well, I just thought it was pretty ridiculous thing to say and also kind of hurt me but yeah as I say eventually that when things started to go terribly wrong it, it was still at the back of my mind what that man had said and, and it, of course now I realise that it was actually true what he'd said um, but, but, but yeah you know my mother and I loved spiritualism we loved the new age everything about it it really was our whole life and, and, and we based our lives around it if predictions were given from mediums or psychics, we would certainly follow through with, you know, seeing those predictions take place. We would certainly go to places that they suggested. Um, we took on their guidance. Basically, if, if the spirits told us to do something, we would do it. You know, in a sense, we were like puppets to, to the spirits. And yet again, we, we didn't question that there could be anything wrong in that. We felt it was wonderful to have their guidance in our lives. Um, so yeah and as you say most people that we hung out with were of the same mind so yeah there there was a a community of people that that we would meet and when you tend to go to the same places the same spiritualist meetings new age fairs new age bookshops and so on you do meet more and more people who are into all that type of stuff and yeah you know when it's true, you know, when we did leave, 
it was it was kind of heartbreaking because you do love the people, of course you do. They're your friends. You've went through a lot together, and so breaking away is hurtful. Um, and my mother and I did even try to share with them what had what we had discovered, what we'd experienced. Certainly, they already knew about that. Um, the terrible things that we had had happened to us, but we tried to share with them. Um, what we had come to learn and they just didn't want to know um, and they couldn't they're lovely people and no malice towards them and they had no malice towards us but they just didn't want to know that they couldn't uh, receive that information and so um, we basically did indeed leave that community uh, and yes it was hard but at the time I can still remember that um, there was just no way we could be involved in it anymore and we just had to had to leave. Um, and, you know, I, I guess it, people can be a bit scared here and that, thinking, oh, I don't want to lose my friends, I don't want to. But, you know, it's the same as anything in life, really. If, you, if you're a child and you move school or, you know, you grow up and go to college or you move jobs, move house, even move country, you, you will meet new friends and new folks come along. So... Please don't let that, you know, stop you from moving on if you feel God is uh, showing you it's time to move on. Amen to that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, I know from my experience, and it's not unique. I think there's, but there's, there definitely is a religious spirit, and most occult and cult communities. And so when you were sharing this stuff with them, did, did mm -hmm. they reject you hard or did, or was it just something that it's, you just drift, slowly drifted away? Because imagine, I know mm -hmm. my experience, you know, just especially in like the new age stuff and the um, like unity and all this positive thinking. I mm -hmm. mean, there's no way you can talk about, well, first of all, talking about Jesus and all that, that's, that's that's hard enough to stomach, but then you like you share other stuff like, you, you know, because they want it to be so positive, everything has to be positive. And you're like, well, that's not life. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, what there there is good and evil. There is a lot of evil out there. What are you talking about? I mean, and it was, <laughs> of all things, we we mentioned earlier about chemtrails. I started learning about chemtrails, and I wanted to talk to the uh, the folks in the, in the New Age community about it, right? And mm -hmm. they just like other communities, but and especially in the community I was in, it was like, you can't talk about any stuff. And then when I got hit, I got hit with MS, multiple sclerosis. Oh. Uh -huh. So, but no, it was all blessing. All that, I'm telling you, it was a blessing. Because uh -huh. God uh -huh. used that. He had to slow me down to such a pace. Uh -huh. and, and, you know, I mean, when I was a New Ager, I was a womanizing, self-centered jerk that, that thought he was the nicest guy around. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, everybody else was playing the same game too, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, acting real like all smiles and all that church and all that kind of stuff. But in truth, everyone else was all about themselves as well. Mm -hmm. And but but you know, there's this whole philosophy and logic and about it where you know you don't really say it, but you know everyone recognizes it's all about you know improving yourself. But back to your spiritualist group. Well, yeah, and I think as well what makes it so convincing and so real is that oftentimes the various teachings uh, that are taught, you know, are coming through these so-called dead relatives, are coming through these so-called spirit beings, spirit guides and so on, which you, you want to believe uh, that they are telling you the truth. You want to believe that the information they're giving you is real and is good for you spiritually and helping you evolve and so on so you're not really prone to doubt these beings or, or, or even doubt their true identity so so it adds to its uh, credence if you like and that's why it, it, you know people do continue in it until they perhaps find out that their so-called spirit guide slips up makes a mistake starts to attack them and so on and, and then the person begins to doubt, you know, what's really going on. <laughs> but yeah, it's so convincing that, that you know, it, 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 you kind of just believe anything they tell you, as you say, that if something 
whether it's MS or whatever, they might say that's a blessing or that's it's because of this reason, it's maybe because of karma, because of a previous life, blah, 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 blah. And any of these reasons, especially if it's been channeled by some, you know, Red Indian chief from hundreds of years ago, apparently, telling you this, then you just tend to believe it. Um, yeah. Right. Well, you, but you don't have that spirit of discernment in you. You don't have the Holy Spirit guiding you, so. If it's not God's spirit, then it's going to be, as now as we know now, it's it's, it's going to, it's just going to be bad news. And I've mm-hmm. seen that manifest in folks in that that community too, where uh, once they're challenged, they go from being really sweet to being really um, quite mean. Uh, really, I don't I, I don't think they have, they can control it. Uh, there is a thing called being demonized, and I believe that's what happened. I mean, I've. Mm-hmm been in you know that new age was just you know at the same time i was also going to a spiritualist church on and off type of thing because one of the guys who was a sponsor for me at the time my first joined AA, i ended up being like mr aa guru too but anyways that's another story but they uh you know going to the spiritualist church on the other side mm-hmm. down and then going to, uh, they also do the unity church which is a new age church on my side of town and just going back and forth type of thing, you know. And there's really there's so this, this, the correlations are so strong as you could you could barely tell the difference if you're really or honest about it. And um, so yeah, um, but you know I remember having in church guys that were well known people and written books and everything turning on me in the middle of church and calling me names and saying blank 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 to me and i'm like when i look back now at the time it did i just laughed it's like i was the first time i ever been in church and somebody called me all these names <laughs> filthy names uh look back now and i'm like well of course he did he was demonized this guy was being led by you know uh evil spirits i mean and, and i know that's really a harsh thing for people to accept Mm-hmm. But when I look at all the behavior, there was like, and I could recognize this too in the Mormon church as well, but the Mormon church was not quite as bad. And that is, you know, people were really sweet to each other at church, especially in the New Age and spiritualists. But if you challenged anything, things got real sour real fast, at least from my experience. And I think as well what, what folks don't realize, and it, it does sound shocking to hear this, but I'll give an example. You know, there's a woman, she's a friend of mine, and um, she shared her testimony on my my blog before. She's just written it again, so it'll be going on my blog soon. And she she was a spiritualist. Her whole family were spiritualists, and her ancestors had been. And they lived in Brazil. And the form of spiritualism they were into was Umbanda, spiritualism um so she was deeply into that and um basically her family some family members came out of it first she didn't she she held on and when they did have a, a christian pastor come to their home and started to pray she you know she thought the guy was wrong that christianity was wrong and you know that all the spirits she had in her life were telling her the truth and so on but when he started to pray, she actually began to contort and demons in her began to manifest. And this went on for some time and she didn't remember any of it, but her family witnessed it. And, uh, you know, the demons were manifesting through her. Now, she did actually come to Jesus and leave spiritualism. And, yes, the, the demons were cast out of her. But, you know, when that first happened, she was shocked because she had no idea she had demons in her. She totally believed the spirits were good that she'd been working with. But, yeah, you know, there, she really came, found out the hard way, if you like, by, by that happening uh, to her. And, of course, that happened to myself as well. When I did leave the spiritualist movement and come to Jesus, the, the demons started manifesting out me as well. So, you know, <laughs> when it's so dramatic as that, you really do have the evidence that what you were into was actually a deception. Now, did you have a support network to help you get, uh, you know, the transition, or was it just uh, you and the Lord? 
Um, basically, I, I didn't know. I, I, and again, this is extremely sad and, and tragic, and this is probably one of the main, re main reasons why I share this a lot, is because it's so terribly common that when someone comes out of um, the New Age, spiritualism, witchcraft, occult, whatever it may be, paranormal, you know, supernatural type experiences, and, and come to the Lord uh, and look for a Christian church, sadly, many of them actually find very few Christian churches even know what to do to help them. Um, very few Christian churches even know how to cast demons out in Jesus' name, which, which to me, uh, uh, when you look at the Gospels, it, casting demons out was a very large, significant part of Jesus' ministry and the disciples. Uh, and of course the apostles too, uh, not just healing the sick and speaking in tongues and, you know, they cast out demons. Um, and yet it, it's something that I think most of the Christian church rather shies away from. And so when confronted with someone who comes looking for help, very often the very first thing they will say to the person is, I think you're mentally ill, I think you've got schizophrenia. Uh, you should, you know, you should go into a psychiatric hospital. That's exactly what happened to me. Mm -hmm. um, and that was 20 odd years ago now. And in the past 20 years, I hear it time and time and time again, if not every week, certainly every month. People contact me and tell me that's been their experience. They come out of the New Age, they come out of the old cult, uh, and... The church they joined couldn't help. They ended up in a psychiatric hospital. They ended up suicidal. It's such a common theme I hear all the time. It's heartbreaking. Uh, and eventually they, they find someone online, like myself or someone else, who can give them that support and help them get set free in Jesus' name. Because, yes, those demons can be cast out. They can be cast out your home, and the torment can stop. But... If someone doesn't tell you that, you don't know that, you know. And it does take, uh, sometimes it does take a Christian minister to come alongside you. Uh, some people get delivered themselves, just them and Jesus. Others, um, it, it takes support and a Christian minister who can cast them out for you. But it's certainly very common and I find it really quite tragic that the church worldwide um, mostly just does not deal adequately with this problem and a lot of the people in our psychiatric hospitals um, are in there because they're being tormented by demons um, and, and, and it's just just tragic so that's why I share what I share because basically that was a position with my mother and um, because the, the house got haunted if you like and these spirits that, that were always good to us before, that had claimed to be our dead relatives, spirit guides and so on, they started turning on us, uh, attacking us. And, of course, our dear spiritualist friends would try to help, give maybe various reasons for why they felt this was happening, and um, so on and so forth. We eventually, yes, we did have to leave there um, when we realised the truth that these things were, were demons. And you know, found a, a Christian church, but my mother was put into the psychiatric hospital, and she was in there for months. When she came out, and yes, she did give her life to Jesus, by the way, uh, she was on very, very strong drugs, where she could hardly walk or talk, antipsychotics, and when she came home, you see, because the Christian pastor had said to us, oh, no, 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 you're Christians now, you can't have demons in your home. Oh, no, no, they must have left the minute you got born again. So he didn't even come to the home to check it out. So when my mother went back home, having been uh, discharged from the hospital, the demons were still there. The torment was still continuing. She was still being harassed by them. Uh, she was still being attacked physically by them and so on. So... As many people do in that situation, she committed suicide. Sorry. Yeah, that was awful. You know, especially because I'm a young Christian at this point. I'd only been saved, oh, only a few months. And basically, I was so 
full of enthusiasm and I, I genuinely, I was praying and I genuinely thought my mother would be healed and set free from all of this. But of course, I was too young in the faith, didn't realise that uh, a lot of pastors don't even believe in <laughs> demons. So, yeah, um, it, it, that's why I do like to try and encourage churches uh, to welcome the deliverance ministry in their church and not be frightened of it. And especially in this late hour we're living in, there is more occult on the rise, it's more popular now. Years ago, it was more hidden and secret, more occult hidden, you know. <laughs> but now, it, it, all these things are much more popular. Children are, are, are getting into things now that children would never have been introduced to. Um, Ouija boards and so on for children, you know, it's uh, the, the people are going to need to need the church's help when they run into difficulties and discover they need help and yet the church is adequ not adequately prepared to help them um yep i agree with you i mean i haven't yet found one around me the few uh pentecostal churches around me they they're abusing it for their own sakes uh, as far as mm. So yeah, it's you know, and what this I don't know how much time you've actually spent on my YouTube channel, but that's what my whole it's just what it's all about at this point is to reveal to people and to give as much and this is what I'm gathering as much a physical evidence of the truth mm -hmm. of the spiritual warfare that we're under, mm -hmm. and my hope is this, this uh, by this this year, God willing, and He has been willing, He's. Things have happened. He's provided things to, you know, uh, the equipment and all that to start uh, soon to start uh, making a movie and uh, and to reveal the fact that there's there are demonic entities out there. They're real. The spiritual warfare is real. Mm -hmm. uh, my hope is that because you know we even you know there's your mom what she went through was terrible and then there's like still even us people like you and I and others. You know, they look at you and they, 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 with like, you're just with that attitude still that we're nuts, we're crazy, but we're not. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. evidence, God has given us now the technology to capture these things. Now, I'm not out there to glorify these things mm -hmm. at all. I'm out there to expose them mm -hmm. and to, to, to present to anybody that God wants to see is uh, the truth of the spiritual warfare that we're we're in mm -hmm. now and, and and it affects all of God's creation including us and that you know demons are real it's not mm -hmm. a joke I mean, if, no. if you want to play games and call it ghost and do your paranormal thing and all that kind of stuff and start your little groups and all that just to you know for your thrills I'm sorry this is bigger than that for me. To me, it's like, you know what, I care enough about you, and I know mm -hmm. I know what these things can do to you. Mm -hmm. They destroyed my life. They destroyed most of my life. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And, um, and robbed me of most of my life. And not only me, but other people. I've seen other people. I've had seen these things attack me and my son. And, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. but, but, you know, that, that was a, it was a blessing in, in disguise because... For me at the time, but God knew, you know, it, it caused me to pray a lot to God and rebuke these things and discover mm -hmm. really the power of the name, the blood of Jesus Christ against these things. It's like, yeah. wow, this is a big part of being a Christian and in a Christian walk that I was completely ignorant about. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, it's I think it's so important in this day and age because uh, things are only going to get worse. So, I mean, mm -hmm. they're just only mm -hmm. going to get worse spiritually and that more and more people are, are so much under the control of these things. I mean, there's the people walking around with lesions of these things in them. Mm -hmm. I, I, me being one of them at one time. <laughs> yeah, me too. I've had so much deliverance that I can't even remember the amount of demons that were cast out of me. <laughs> you know, uh, when my mother um, killed herself, you know, um, the demons actually were manifesting in me and I, I did go back to my pastor and explain this to him and again he just thought oh uh, you know I was just mentally ill like my mother and he actually told my husband to put me in the psychiatric hospital so of course I was pretty terrified because my mother had just been in there 
came back home and killed herself. And now I was, you know, being advised to go in. So it was a rather horrible time. But I did, uh, my husband didn't do that because he obviously was at home with me. He saw the dim light manifestations. He knew it wasn't just <laughs> mental illness. So we did start going around looking for a Christian church that could help. And we went from one to another, from one to another, from one to another. And it was not pleasant, really, what happened to me, because, you know, nine times out of ten, yes, it was the Pentecostal churches we approached for help, simply because they do have the power of God, they do have healing miracles, they do speak in tongues and so on. So I just assumed, well, surely they can cast demons out too, but most of them couldn't. Um, And really, I was a bit of a guinea pig up in front of the church, you know, being shouted at, uh, come out of her in Jesus' name and nothing happening and myself manifesting as screaming demons and feeling like a circus animal. And again, people tell me this constantly that they've been through the same. And you know, I'm not just, I'm not trying to be uh, down on these churches because many of them did try and maybe if I was in their position, I, I would have been the same. You know, just assume the person's mentally ill, because what else can you assume, I suppose? Um, But it's just because of my own experience of it, I realise that, you know, it it is real. And basically, I eventually found a church that had experience of the deliverance ministry, and they were the church that got me uh, free. And, yeah, these things are real. And again, people might say they really are real ghosts. But they're not, they're not real ghosts. You know, the reason is, any of these entities, when challenged at the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to show your true identity, the amount of people around the world who have told me they've done this because they saw me say it on TV or whatever, they challenged their so-called ghost friend or spirit guide or alien or whatever in the name of Jesus Christ. And that being started to morph before their very eyes and turn into a hideous demon and it would scream at the name of Jesus and so on and the person would get rid of it and get it out of their house uh, and stop doing those spiritual practices. Uh, You know, the proof's in the pudding. Um, The Bible says when someone dies, they actually go to heaven or hell. It does not say they become a ghost and an earthbound spirit and visit people. Um, Sadly, it's a, a demonic deception. Right, it only pointed only pointed once to die, and then the judgment. So there mm-hmm. is no coming back. And there's another thing too. You talked you talked earlier about um, oh, when you come back again, what is that? Come back again and uh, yeah, karma, 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 and, and, and all that kind of reincarnation past lives and all that. Yeah, yeah, but, the, yeah. We we were into that too. We totally believed all that. And again, there would seem to be ample evidence that that's true. Um, but again, if you <sighs> During a session, if you like, a, a regression session, if the, the, the hypnotherapist or, or past life coach is willing to for a Christian to come in the room and, you know, rebuke this in the name of Jesus Christ, you will see that demons will manifest and that they actually have been lying. Again, why do they do this? Obviously, Hinduism, Buddhism, many religions that, that, that teach this, because the spirits genuinely do come from Satan, they would rather a person believes in any type of religion, any type of spiritual practice, as long as that person does not find the truth that Jesus Christ is the Saviour and that heaven and hell is real, because those demons, they're from Satan, and they want everybody to go to hell. So, yeah, they're not going to, uh, you know, convince you to come to Jesus and get born again. They want to keep you away from him. And they'll feed people with all sorts of spiritual stuff uh, to convince people right. that uh, their path is, is the right path for them. Um, there's so many paths to follow. Any path you follow is okay. It's your <laughs> path. It's unique. So go with whatever one you want to, you feel to, um, except to see that Jesus Christ is a saviour and that we need to be forgiven through him to really be set free and to have an eternity in heaven. And that's why, because people will say, well, why do the spirits do this? Why are there so many religions? Blah, blah, blah. That is why. It's because the demons, uh, under Satan's command, 
will do anything to keep people away from Jesus Christ and eternal salvation in Him. Right. And I, I personally, you know, when you, at least my relationship with my God, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who created me and you and everything else, as we know, uh, if we read his word and, and pray on it and ask and uh, contemplate and meditate on it, true med- you know, meditation was just basically not free in your mind and opening up your mind, but actually uh, pondering and thinking about things, asking mm-hmm. God for an answer. Or these things. Mm-hmm. And I know this seems... Cr- People say, "Well, you're, you're, what's, you're religious, just like everyone else." And I'm and like, "You know, no. I'm interested in the truth. I'm not interested mm-hmm. in building, and I'm not interested in all the different movements. And I know that even Christianity has been usurped by the same satanic system that we're all under. Oh yeah, a yeah. religious spirit that has nothing to do with what my Lord and Savior taught mm-hmm. and exampled." Mm-hmm. And so, but you see, people, you know, this is what they've, you know, the whole world's been deceived into thinking that, A, that to follow Jesus is like a religion. Mm-hmm. And I know Christians that will tell me that, that it is a religion. I'm like, well, if it's a religion to you, then so be it. And you're, you're, you represent the vast majority of, of what people call Christians. And I'm not saying they're not saved, and that most of them aren't saved. But what I am mm-hmm. saying is, is this the spirit of religion. It snares people. It keeps them from go, moving on in their. Uh, uh, if, so if you really want, see, this is the amazing thing. I mean, I bought like hundreds of, probably hundreds of books, of self-help books, and all these different things, trying to figure out how to fit in, how to fit in this this world, which I never was supposed to in the first place. Mm-hmm. Uh, fit in, and it was never going to fit in. And like, so if somebody's hearing this right now. And you're going through the same problem where you're trying and trying and trying, and you seem like it seems like you're just an absolute failure at everything that's going on in life. And you look at all these things that are presented to you, and they're billion, you know, of images and people, uh, examples of what you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be a billionaire and have a trophy wife and the big house and all that. Listen, mm-hmm. there's a reason why you're not succeeding. That's because you're most likely. Now I can't tell you say for sure because I can't speak for God. But you can ask God and find out by falling on your knees and praying out to God. Heavenly Father, is Jesus true? Ask Jesus, is he true? Ask him to come into mm-hmm. your heart as they talk about. And allow it to happen the way God does. And he does it organically. It's not based on a format or a formula or what church you belong to. Because it has mm-hmm. nothing to do with that. No. Understand the importance of what I said earlier. Jesus is God yet. He created you. You're his creation. Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ created all things and created you. Okay? And so ask him what is truth. Ask him mm-hmm. what, what and, and I know it's going to seem like you, we, you could say God's going to talk to me. Well, he might just audibly talk to you, but I know with me, he presented me in, in positions and as, and places and uh, mm-hmm. and books and then reading the Bible and most importantly is discovering just really to read the Bible openly and honestly and stop being so critical about the whole thing. But the mm-hmm. reason why you're critical about the whole thing is because all the garbage that was put into your head to begin with, mm-hmm. you know, from the, the public school system to the television to all sorts of false teachings to all the false images and Hollywood of what a Christian is is. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and that it's, it's really, I mean, the, the day we are so under such a strong witchcraft and sorcery and that and most people can't even recognize that that is, that is real. Mm-hmm. I couldn't recognize that. Even even a year ago, I witchcraft was, okay, I know it was bad. God says stay away from it. But I had no idea how much I was under witchcraft. How much mm-hmm. everybody is. You know, if you watch any length of time of television or spend too much time, you know, and all that, like the truther movement and, and the Internet or whatever, you're never – you're, you're going to you go down one rabbit trail after another, one a rabbit hole after another, and nothing – you'll end up still spiritually dead, bankrupt. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. the moment I sur- finally surrendered to Christ, it's like, wow, I actually have peace. In my circumstances. Yeah, because it's not like, as you say, 
even the truth or movement itself can be kind of like a religion in a sense because people put all their thoughts into it and as you say down one rabbit hole after another and for this um, amassing of information amassing of knowledge of getting to the truth uh, but what's that doing for you spiritually you know that um okay you know it's good to learn stuff but there is a fine line um between that and, and getting off into basically distracting you from a relationship with god a relationship with jesus christ uh not religion as you say but you know relationship with jesus and getting to know him getting closer to him seeing praying to him and starting to see your prayers answered starting to see miracles take place starting to see when you pray for your friends or for others they get healed or demons come out and so on you know that you know that's purpose that's that's life not just amassing all this filling our heads with all this information that's not spiritual food for you it's uh, intellectual yeah um but it's not spiritual food and that can only be found um through a relationship with jesus christ you know and as you say you know christians we, we're guilty of that as well at times going off into uh, rabbit holes and investigating stuff um and yeah our relationship with jesus does does suffer but when we do that but he's loving and he's merciful and he wants you know to, to always um us to, to to go back to him and as you say if you know if people are in doubt pray that's certainly what i did um when my mother and I were getting attacked by these so-called ghosts, so-called spirit guides, um, you know, what happened was she, yes, she got put in the psychiatric hospital. And at this point, I was in second year at university. I met a Christian lady. She, she was a, a Pentecostal. And I think because she was a Pentecostal, that's what God used to pique my interest shall we say i think if i had met a christian from another denomination who um you know didn't believe in miracles or, or healings or speaking in tongues or casting out demons i might not have listened to them but because she was this christian that was telling me about supernatural stuff that was happening in our church people were getting healed people were speaking in tongues i thought oh that's interesting uh didn't know christians did stuff like that it piqued my interest so I started going to her church because she asked me people were speaking in tongues and I found that was beautiful it really grabbed my attention I wanted to go back and tell all the spiritualists this that I knew because I thought wow they've got to hear this speaking in tongues it's beautiful I knew it was real you know I could tell this was supernatural this was powerful um and when it got to the stage where I was still being attacked by demons. My mother was still in the psychiatric hospital. And I literally came back from her church and I was like, wow, wait a minute here. What if it's really true? What if it's really true Jesus really is the, the, the Son of God? The Bible's actually true after all. It's not lies. I'm the one that's been deceived after all. And these, these uh, entities are demons. What if this is true? Now, this is a great shock for me. To, to come to this realisation, a great shock to, to, to find out everything you believed in has been a, a, a lie from demons. It really was quite traumatic to, to even contemplate this. But I did do exactly that. You know, I did pray. Um, and, and I prayed, you know, God, if, if you are real, if Jesus Christ really is the Saviour, please show me. Please show me what to do. And uh, I, I want to follow you of course I want to follow you if you're the truth uh, you know as a truth seeker you finally find out what the truth is you want to follow it um, you want to know who God is so I prayed that and you know the the demons weren't happy I prayed it I even opened a bible and looked through it and I was physically attacked by those demons again oh yeah now yeah and you know talking about answers answer prayer michael um the very next morning when uh, i woke up and i was attacked through the night by the way the very next morning the doorbell rang so i went to answer the door and how's this for answer prayer it was a woman who herself had been a, a, a spiritualist a 
she called herself a Romany gypsy and she would come around the neighbourhoods maybe once a year and, and sell things and while she was at your door selling you something she would uh, give you a prediction or read your palm or um, channel some spirit to you so I knew the woman you know didn't don't think I knew her well but I certainly knew her so when she appeared at the door I thought oh wow and I kind of wanted to talk to her it's like I wanted to tell her what was going on and yet I was a battling it in my mind because I thought she's still a spiritualist she's not going to want to know about Jesus or well much to my amazement she said to me Laura uh, the Holy Spirit has sent me to come and talk to you today he sent me to tell you that where you went to last night was the right place you are now finally um, you know coming into the truth spiritually and I myself have renounced all uh, my former beliefs and I've become a Christian I'm born again and Jesus Christ set me free and the psychic abilities the psychic powers all that has left me uh, I'm a born again Christian <laughs> so I was amazed because there I'd been the night before at the Christian church and prayed asking if Jesus was real and of all people he would send along a psychic spiritualist woman who had been converted to show me and, and really prophesy to me that I was on the right path and um, it was shortly after that that yes I did ask Jesus Christ into my heart That's wonderful. <coughs> um, so, uh, okay, so they had this amazing experience, which is really an amazing experience, and, you, and it obviously was because you still remember it. So, mm -hmm. um, it was something meaningful and amazing. Uh, what has it been like? Can you give us a comparison now? Okay, we talk about the demons and all that kind of stuff, and maybe people are going to say, "Oh, yeah, demons." So, that, they're, that maybe they're not quite ready to hear of that true aspect of our reality uh, more real than most things that you'll see on television folks by the way anyways I, and i'd say that with all total confidence total confidence by the way and mm -hmm. I, and i know in a court of law i would win because <laughs> i have the evidence um on both sides listen tell people what it was like before and after, uh, since then, as far as you, the person, let's let's talk. Okay, we talked a little bit about it before. What has it been like since that moment when you were saved for you? Mm -hmm. um, yes, I, I would be delighted to. But before I do, I just say something you touched on there. You know, that was twenty odd years ago when that all happened to me. And since I've become a Christian, not once, not once in all that time has a so-called ghost or spirit guide ever tried to appear to me again. Not once. Um, people might say, well, it's just because the ghosts know you don't want to talk to them anymore. They've stayed away. <laughs> well, how is it then when I go uh, to meet someone who's having problems with a so-called unfriendly ghost in their house or poltergeist in their house when I go and rebuke it at the name of Jesus Christ it will show itself as a demon and it will leave that person's home i.e. what I'm trying to say is there is no such thing as ghosts they are demons in disguise you know I've been to people's home that still believe the thing in their house was a ghost and, and yet I've challenged it in the name of Jesus Christ the person realises they see it Sometimes I don't even see them, but the people can see it morphing and changing, looking like granny, dead granny, into a demon and, and uh, banging around the walls and then, you know, jumping out the window because the name of Jesus has been said to it. So, you know, the proof is there and, and the Bible does actually explain it all. I know folks won't maybe know this, but the Bible does explain that, that Satan and his angels, fallen angels, they can masquerade. They can morph to pretend to be an angel of light, to pretend to be a ghost, um, to, to get your attention and basically to get involved in all that stuff. So, yeah, uh, uh, so in the last 20 years, I've never had a ghost appear to me again. But, yes, I've had demons appear 
and warfare and yes, cast demons out of people and that is very real and they do go at the name of, of Jesus Christ. Um, so please don't be deceived by so-called ghosts. And if it's guidance that, that, that you've appreciated from these beings before, there is no guidance as good as the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And you don't need to go into meditation to get his yoga. You don't need to do spell work. You don't need to uh, go to a seance or channel a spirit. The Holy Spirit is there. And just pray to him. He will give you guidance. He will give you direction, primarily through the Bible. You could pray a question to God one day and the next day you open your Bible and the answer's there staring you in the face. It's like God has given you the answer. Um, so what you know the difference that it has made in my life, um, as you were saying, Michael, is that obviously, you know, I no longer look for guidance um, from spirits. Um, my relationship is with Jesus Christ now, not a spirit guide or not ghosts. And and his Holy Spirit does guide me, does lead me. Um, and, you know, all those things I sought in the New Age, like self-improvement, self-help and so on, when you walk with Jesus, he does actually bring self-improvement to you. But he's doing it from with his Holy Spirit. He he does make you, um, you know, rub away your rough edges, so to speak, you know, as you say, whether it's been alcohol or, or whether it's been, you say, issues of anger or, or whatever a, a person is wanting to improve upon, that help comes from Jesus and he does it miraculously. Um, and, you know, one of the th things, of, one of the main changes in my life, I suppose, you know, I was always a shy person and very quiet. I would be the last person I would ever think uh, God would call into ministry, public speaking, you know, would terrify me, and yet he he has enabled me to do it because he's gave me such a passion to warn others, and when we say these things, you know, Michael and I are not trying to be judgmental, we're not trying to, don't dislike people that are into these things, we just have saw the truth of it and want to desperately warn folks and encourage them to come to Jesus. Um, so, yeah, that, yeah, as you know yourself, there's a multitude of, of reasons that, that Jesus uh, blesses us and uh, improves our, our, our lives. Our relationships with people become better. You know, everything basically in your life becomes better. Now, that almost sounds like using Jesus as a magic talisman. I know we don't do that because it's relationship. But he just, he, he takes away all the bad stuff um, and just blesses you. Basically, not to say you never have problems again, but he's with you constantly, um, always uh, helping you. Yeah, he's going to help you overcome those challenges. Uh huh. And, and you know, for me too, you know, if it's like your relationships, mine changed. The old relationships all left, and new, more meaningful ones that revolve around him. Mm -hmm have developed and that's uh, much more gratifying for me and you know one of the things that as you were talking um, that's making me think of folks because you know I was you folks I mean not that I'm and I'm not any better I'm just uh, not walking with the true and living God and his spirit so uh, I'm getting you know a life is different for me much more uh, gratifying and much more uh I mean, I'm at peace for whatever the situation may be right now. So, I mean, I, and um, I live a much more simpler life. Yet, at the same token, I have a much more fuller and satisfying and much more interesting life than I ever did prior to then. When I was chasing mm -hmm. after my lusts and my desires and my passions and me, 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 me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, one of the things uh, maybe you could talk about, too, if you're willing to, is... Uh, because you you know that people are going to be listening to this or who are in say in spiritualism or the new age movement or all the other occult uh, practices and mystery schools as they call it uh, mystery Babylon um, that um, they're going to think well man you're that you're offering me a lesser life a uh, more humdrum boring life 
<laughs> you know, my life's really exciting now. I really love my life. Uh-huh. Um, and you know that's the attitude that many of them are going to have. Because of well, that, yeah, that's that we believe that too. I certainly believe that. I didn't want to become. But, you know, when I found out the truth, my first reaction was, I don't want to become a Christian. You know, uh, it's like I, I realised I was being hypocritical because I thought, okay, I've been a truth seeker. I've been willing to, once confronted with the truth, I want to follow that. And here I am, confronted by the truth, and I don't even want to become a Christian. But that's because I have such a distorted view of Christianity, um, obviously, and haven't really yet saw the real Christianity. Um, but and yeah, no, it's not boring at all. Absolutely not. And I remember I was someone who was fascinated by the paranormal, supernatural, anything supernatural, paranormal would fascinate me, would thrill me. I, I was used to having experiences like that. Uh, so it certainly wasn't boring. Uh, did I become a Christian and become bored? No, not at all. Uh, one, my relationship with Jesus became so fulfilling that even if nothing supernatural happened with Jesus, you know, I was fulfilled with him. And then, uh, you know, I began to see that, hey, you know, Jesus actually wants us to to be uh, spiritual beings that, that, that move in his power, that do the miraculous, that, that heal the sick, that cast out demons, that speak in tongues. That happened in the New Testament and it still happens today. And there ain't nothing boring about that. When you see someone who's been demon-possessed, being set free, uh, it's the most wonderful thing in the world when you see someone healed. You know, I've saw people healed of blindness. I've saw people out of wheelchairs when I've prayed for them. Uh, and all I did was pray in the name of Jesus to be healed. You know, it's it's not as if it's, oh gosh, you got to meditate for hours or you got to do all this spell work. Or, no, it's instant. Often, many times, it's instant. You know, there isn't anything boring about that. Um not at all. If I'd known what I'd known now, I, I wished, you know, I'd become a Christian at a very young age. But, you know, I believe God allowed me to get through all that stuff uh, because that's the way I had to learn it all, uh, obviously, so that now I can warn others. But, oh boy, if I had known Christianity, if I'd known being a Christian was like this, <laughs> I definitely wished I had done it years ago, that's for sure. Yeah, it's 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 nothing like what uh, the world has presented to you. No, no. You know, it's nothing in it at all. If you walk in the Spirit, like you said, if you follow Jesus, and if you don't turn, you know, so a lot of people get ensnared in, when they first find out about Jesus, they get snared into religion. They think that the mm-hmm. church is, is what it's all about, and mm-hmm. it's not. I mean, I'm not saying the body of Christ is not important. It's not important to get together with uh, other Christians and, and, and worship God and all that kind of stuff. And that's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is is that people, and, uh, and it's, it's, it's natural to do this because of how we've been conditioned mm-hmm. and indoctrinated into needing to belong to a group and what that means. Mm-hmm. That means, you know, following the rules and, the, you know, the, the guidelines and the, uh, mm-hmm. The rules of the game, if you're the rules of the group, right? Well, yeah. th- there's God's rules, which are different than men's rules. God's ways are much higher than our ways. Mm-hmm. And one of the things a person has to do, if you're going to follow Christ, I, I strongly suggest that you follow him first and mm-hmm. foremost. And my situation, because of where I met my circumstances, I haven't found that church, per se, that mm-hmm. building to go to. There's a church I go to, but it's not like, you know, I mean, there's a lot of times in the spirit of God's not even there. <laughs> but yeah, mm-hmm. I go there for other reasons, you know. But, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's and and I'm not a member of the church. I'm a member of the body of Christ. I'm a mem- I'm, I am a blood-bought soul of God. Mm-hmm. He's, he, I am his. And he'll take me wherever he wants to take me. And he's going to take you wherever he wants to take you. And it's a much better place. And it's not religion. It has mm-hmm. nothing to do with religion. As much as people want to say it is, and they'll argue until they're, I know, I could have debate after debate about this mm-hmm. with people in the body of Christ, let alone outside the battle of Christ, which is 
you know what's mm-hmm. going to happen. But if you, you really follow Jesus, or the expert, you know, when you let him lead you, mm-hmm. you let him to, to say, okay, you're king, you're God, you're the creator, I'm the creation, you know, you're the boss, I'm not. I made a big mistake here thinking that it was all about me. It's really about you. What's going to happen next you mm-hmm. know, is that you're going to get to like this much more. It's going to be very challenging, very frustrating at times, but it's all to teach you something very mm-hmm. important. Mm-hmm. He's God. You're not. No. And that it's a good place to be to know that. And what Mm -hmm. great knowledge to know where the true living God is, who created you, and um, that being his servant, actually, he he does free you from all the bondage that's out there. Now, that doesn't mean you don't have your challenges in life, because there's still, you know, things Mm -hmm. that, you know, knowing the prince of this world, and, you know, he's the one attempted, you know, Christ with all the kingdoms of this world. And so he's mm-hmm. still allowed at this point to still be in charge of all those the man-made kingdoms. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, to know God, to know him, it's not found in a brick-and-mortar building. Mm-hmm. You are the temple now. Mm-hmm. Now, this is one of the mistakes that a lot of people make, and they say, well, uh, everybody's the temple. No, you're only the temple once God has you. And once God's spirit fills you, then mm-hmm. you become the temple. But you gotta let him to do that. You gotta let him do that. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, he had to teach me all sorts of stuff, and rearrange my thinking, rearrange my uh, my attitude, rearrange everything. So you know, as now that you, you come to a point, and you fairly realize, folks, Ephesians six twelve is real. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. I'm not at war with any human being. The only thing that I'm the things that I'm at war with are these demonic entities. Yes, exactly. These demons and the Satan himself and his and his minion and his army. Exactly. I'm not at war with anybody. Now, if somebody no. wants to be at war with me, I have a choice to play that game, or I could say, "Listen, good chance these demons are manipulating that person to mm-hmm. do this thing." Just trying to wind me up, to try to me to forget about what my real purpose here in this world is. Yeah, and you know, I, I would totally agree. We're not at war with anyone. We're not at war with non-Christians. Um, in fact, Jesus tells us even if someone considers themselves their enemy, or you know, if they think of us as enemies and they want to curse us, for example, what does Jesus say? Bless those who curse you. So. You know, it's not the first time I've had someone, some occultist or a Satanist or Kabbalist or someone contact me and say they're going to curse me, they're going to kill me. What do I do? Do I start arguing with them and being nasty? No. Um, I tell them Jesus loves them, Jesus wants to save them, because that's what Jesus wants to do. We're not at war with people. As you say, it's the demons we we don't like. It's the demons that (laughs) we're at war with. Um, That's so true. And, it's just like in Jesus witches. Name. I've had, you know, witchcraft, uh, you know what I mean, directed at me where I finally, when I finally realized what it was, is really demons. Mm-hmm. And that these, uh, you know, somebody of a shaman or a witch, somebody of a pretty powerful one, too, because of the number of demons and how big they were and everything else that I experienced. But, um,. Mm-hmm. Was uh, it, it finally dawned on me because at first I was really angry at the person and really angry at the witches and the sorcerers and Satanists and other doing their mm-hmm. rituals and stuff against me. Then I finally realized I need to curse the demon, bless the person. Yes, yes. That's the equation here. So when I pray mm-hmm. against, I'm praying against. Satan, his kingdom. I'm not praying against the person. I ask for no, their salvation. No. I used yeah, to say yeah. stuff like, "Send God, send those demons back to that person," and seven times worse. Now I'm oh, like, yeah. I'm uh, like, oh, you know what? Uh, I'm being a witch too by doing that. What am I doing? Yeah, I can't be that, doing that's, that. That's not loving doing that, is it? You, you want no. the person to be saved. You want them to be set free. And how do you know that maybe God's allowed it to happen because He wants you to pray for that person to 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 come into salvation. 
you know, if I had been involved in stuff like that and maybe, you know, tried to curse a Christian or whatever, I would wish that, 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 that yeah, the Christian actually prayed for me and, and it helped me to, to find Jesus rather than uh, just send the curses back. Which are demons. That's the thing, right? I'm scared of it. If, you know, that's the only thing that's, you know, it's, it's whether these witches know, realize what they're doing or not as far as, mm-hmm. you know, channeling and working with these demons to have, you know, many do, especially those who are in the know. But there's a lot of folks who just don't know what they're doing. They, they're just part of their religion, their, their, their way of life, their philosophy. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're channeling and using demons. But, you know, it's, uh, the thing is, is, you know, if you, if you buy, you know, you, you you call upon Lord Jesus Christ, you call upon His blood, in the name of Jesus Christ, and you rebuke these things, you bind them. And I'm not talking about the people; I'm talking about the demons, mm-hmm. and ask mm-hmm. them to send them somewhere where they belong, wherever you want to take them, God. If it's outer mm-hmm. darkness, if it's the abyss, whatever, just take them away from us. Free those people from those demons. Mm-hmm. That really uh- messes up. This the demonic world's plans. You know, and there is people (laughs) there is people who who will admit to uh, they've done stuff like that in the past, whether they were into Satanism or or whatever it was, and they have called up demons and sent the demons to go attack Christians, you know, in their neighbourhood and the demons will come back and for example and say, Don't you ever send me to a Christian's house again (laughs) <laughs> and obviously what's happened is the demons went there and the, uh, some Christians who are not very strong in their faith or, or, or don't know how to find and rebuke the demon maybe maybe just get scared by it and say nothing and just let the demon leave again. But Christians who who are, are you know, know that, that, that Jesus is there with them, rebuke it and send it away. <laughs> it goes back to the person and says, don't you ever send me to that Christian's house again. Why? Because obviously when the Christian rebuked it in Jesus' name, the demon, um, well, I assume it felt some type of pain, some type of whatever. It didn't like the light and it went fleeing back to, to its uh, dark darkness of its uh, host's home. So, yeah. And you know what you were saying earlier as well? I didn't um, answer yet, Michael. You know, talking about don't worry about what church to go to and all that. Because, you know, when you think about it, if, if you, for example, say you were in prison somewhere and you're going to be in prison for years uh, for whatever reason, wrongfully accused of not, and you actually come to faith in Jesus in that prison, you can't go to church. You know, you can't uh, go to a Baptist church, a, a, a Lutheran church, a, a Pentecostal church, a or whatever type of denomination, uh, you're in prison. So what do you do? You, you read the Bible and you develop that relationship with yourself, with, with, with Jesus Christ. Um, and you maybe speak to a few other prison inmates who are Christians too, and that's your fellowship, if you like. But, you know, it's not about going to a certain building. Or, uh, there's so many Christian denominations that can seem like, well, which one should I go to? And as you say, there is no perfect church um, no perfect denomination. Some of them have got the problems. Some have got serious problems, like maybe they're, you know, into financial stuff where they're just in it for the money, if you like. So yeah, but the, the Christian Christianity, churches, buildings, people groups have problems, but we don't base um, it on that. We base it on our relationship with Jesus Christ and getting close to Him. And, and remembering, as you say, he, you know, he is the creator, he is our Heavenly Father, and he wants that relationship with us because we are his, you know, he sees us as, as his little children. So no matter what age you are, even if you're 85 and just come to Jesus Christ, it's like he just wants to take you in his, his arms and hug you and love you and, and, and be with you. He just adores you and loves you so much. Um, so, yep. It's about relationship with Jesus. It's not about following religious dogmas. No, well, yeah, and it's not about works. And that's another thing about this whole thing. Mm-hmm. And what people get fall in their trap is, you know, they think that by going to this particular church and doing the certain, quote-unquote, sacraments or rituals or, you know, uh, that uh, 
somehow you're earning points with God. <laughs> mm-hmm. But that's not really the truth. The truth is, is that you need to you need to, to have a personal relationship with God and you need to figure that out and how it's going to be uh, I mean uh, when I say that what happens is through experience with the Lord you discover what that personal relationship is mm-hmm. and um, you know uh, he might have to take you out of the world for a season or two, you know, maybe three, mm-hmm. and until he mm-hmm. he properly educates you, he properly educates you um, who he is, what he expects out of you, and what you should expect in as far as this whole you know walking with the Lord. So, um, mm-hmm. and it's a continuous learning journey. I mean, the things mm-hmm. that I've learned since. I fell on my knees crying for help, you know what I mean? And, <laughs> and it is that I just, uh, you know, and there's a time in season two where you, you will feel like, man, do I belong anywhere? Mm-hmm. This, but you, know, you know, yeah, you belong to him. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know, you know and there's that, uh, I think as well, sometimes we can, as you say, it's natural for a person to want to belong. Of course it is. We're, we're, God created us to be sociable beings, and he did create us to fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ, absolutely. Um, But I think there can be that um, sometimes people going to a variety of different churches, you know, perhaps, and just kind of a feeling like they're not quite fitting in anywhere, um, and that might feel um, upsetting for the person, but I think often when that's happening, it's actually because God's, again, he's allowing it to show the person it's more important that you're really grounded and that you're really close to me. Again, you know, if, for example, you were in prison, you'd have no choice but but to only talk to Jesus, you know. Um, And also I've noticed more and more that, that there are many believers who, in actual fact, have been around quite a few churches in their city, and um, even been members of them for, for years. But sadly, just because we're in the last days, there is more heresy, more error, more New Age stuff creeping into churches. And when some of these Christians see that, they you know they feel God is leading them out of that church again. And of course, people won't understand what's going on. Maybe think the person's just backsliding or something. But, you know, so there's people who literally find I hear this all the time there's not really many churches in that area that they would go to because they're seeing new age stuff creeping in and they'd rather stay away from that especially if they've already been delivered from that because they used to be involved in it all so yeah there's some people that literally can't get to church Um, what happens then you know does God get angry at them Uh, no, because it's more about your relationship with him. And yes, it is important to get with other Christians if you can. But if you're in jail, you can. If you're on a desert island, you can. It's you and Jesus that's the most important thing. And you know, Michael, you mentioned MS earlier. Years ago, when I was a new Christian, I actually, for years suffered from fibromyalgia and it was so bad I was literally housebound and spent most of my days and nights in bed. Now you can imagine I literally missed church for a good long time. I missed church, I missed going there and you know I would worry about that and think oh it's God you know I'm not maybe developing very well as a Christian, I'm maybe not growing, is God angry at me or whatever. And I remember even talking to the minister about it and being told, well, obviously God knows you're ill. Um, and it's not about going to church and helping to clean the toilets or helping to run a Bible study or whatever it is. Primarily, this is all about your relationship with Jesus, not about your works, uh, what you can do or what you can't do. It's you and him, an yeah. intimate you know, relationship. And then I, well, I did actually get healed of the fibromyalgia, in actual fact, because uh, I would obviously go to 
to the healing meetings and interestingly enough it happened to be a demon uh, so rather than just being healed the demon was actually cast out when the demon was cast out all the symptoms of fibromyalgia left instantly and have never returned praise God that was really uh, a wonderful miracle that he did now say that once again the whole, about the, what happened about the healing uh -huh. Well, um, I would go to, when I could manage, I would go to the, you know, the healing meetings that would take place in, in the church or other Christian conferences that I would hear about. I would go to healing meetings, genuinely, because I thought, you know, obviously I need healed. Uh, but sometimes people make the mistake of trying to, to get healed from something, when in actual fact they're going about it the wrong way, because if you look at the Gospels, Jesus and the disciples Yes, they healed the sick, certainly, but there were times where it wasn't just a, shall we say, straightforward healing as such, but it was an actual deliverance that was needed and a, a spirit of infirmity, um, a spirit of whatever it might be, was cast out the person and then the person was healed. So often healing and deliverance are, are closely linked, but if folks don't know that, they just keep praying for healing. They don't think to... Uh, you know, rebuke the spirit and cast it out. Um, so, yeah, that's what happened to me. And I've, I've seen that more and more people, whether it's, you know, sometimes maybe blindness, cancer, whatever it, it could be, that it's actually the, a spirit involved there. And once that is cast out, the person then is fully healed. Mm. Yeah. Well, I did, that's amazing. That's just, uh, I believe that. You mm -hmm. know, it's, um, you know, like I said, the MS has been a real blessing, but I imagine that sometimes God wants, um, he's going to heal me. But I, I Probably right now, it probably makes sense that he doesn't, I mean, I'm still walking with a cane. I'm not like wheelchair bound or anything, but I have gone through serious bouts, just what you're talking about, of being bedridden, um, but, I'm or so you know, laying on the couch, really. Uh, um, <laughs> but you know mm -hmm. what? All that time, though, a lot of that time was uh, listening to videos. A lot of the time was like listening to sermons and and uh, other guys' preachings and teachings, and uh, and he used that to slow me down to to rearrange my brain, believe it or not, to make me see the truth about the world, what's really going on, and and um, how important he is in my life and that kind of thing. So I I don't. I don't see it as a a negative. I, I, I see it as great wisdom that he allowed this to happen. And I also believe mm -hmm. that witchcraft was involved with it too, because all this started happening sure. when I was involved in the Unity Church and doing the secret and doing the vision board and doing all the other stuff and channeling and meditating and basically mm -hmm. getting demonized and demon infested. Uh, that God allowed it to happen to cause me to uh, fall on my knees. Because mm -hmm. if it, you know, I'll be honest with you, if he didn't do that and allow that, or didn't allow that to happen, mm -hmm. I would be the old Mike. And mm -hmm. uh, with no real conscience, thinking that, you know, that my behavior had no really negative co uh, consequences. But mm -hmm. it did. Yeah. And, um, so, I know what you mean, I know yeah. what you mean, and, and you know, but so many folks who, I believe that's why, I know I had the fibromyalgia and other things that I've been healed of, um, was through being demonised through uh, occult stuff, and so, so many folks tell me that, you know, once they come to the Lord, uh, they get healed of certain things, and, and often, as I say, it's not just a healing, they actually had things demons of, of illness cast out um, and they believed that they had got got it you know whilst they were in the occult uh, and yeah uh, totally uh, it totally makes totally makes sense and you know I, I, I was like that when I had the obviously the fibromyalgia um, I was spending more time in the house so like that you know I was watching Christian TV listening to Christian radio um, so, yeah, I think that God will take a bad situation and bring good out of it. And although he didn't want me to be ill as such, 
um, the time, you know, sometimes was well spent in doing these things. But then, of course, as soon as uh, it was revealed to me that it was a demon uh, and it was cast out, that, I believe, if anyone's got a, a demon for whatever reason, you know, God does want that person free. He died on the cross to set us free from all things. And, yeah, um, I just, just think it, it's glorious, the the changes that, that, he, that he can bring in, in a person's life is just really quite phenomenal. Yes. Well, this has uh, been a wonderful uh, time with you, Laura. Um, I could talk forever and ever with you. Um, it's Sister in Christ and about all sorts of things. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Laura Maxwell, it's ourspiritualquest.com. And you can check out for that. And then, of course, her YouTube channel, which is Laura Maxwell X Spiritualist. And, um, and then she's got all sorts of things and, uh, upcoming. It's, uh, what, tell us, what are some of the things to look for from, as far as projects in the near future? Um. Well, yeah, the, the, the radio show that, that I've been hosting for three years is in its last season now. We've got a new guest. Her name is Dana Emanuel. She is from uh, Florida. Uh, she was a ghost hunter and she was the leader of a very successful paranormal investigation team that would tour Florida. And she, she actually saw me on TV years ago and uh, my story touched her and, and helped her. God used it to help her, you know, come out of the occult. So, so her her interview is happening just now, and, and I'll be interviewing her for the next few weeks. And she is the very last guest on uh, the radio show. But, but yeah, then I will announce to the audience what you know the Lord is uh, opening up the doors for. But yeah, also uh, taking time to write a book. I've been twenty twenty plus years since I've been a Christian. And um, always felt the Lord wanted me to write a book about it. And I quite frankly ended up getting busy with the radio and so on that, that it's been very difficult to try and get it written. Um, but that is something that I'm currently doing. And there will be some very delicate topics in there that I do feel need exposed, like the phenomena of people nowadays having sex with so-called ghosts. Um has become really quite popular, which of course we know as incubus and succubus. Um, and I want to touch on that because it's even been promoted now in websites. Would you believe how to how to call up a spirit to have uh, sex with? And the thought of young teenagers getting into all this—well, anyone really of any age—is um, just horrific. So yeah, it's, it's going to touch on some delicate topics that I feel do need addressed. Yes, as that is, and not only that, I mean, there's like, apparently it's like a multi-million dollar business to some of the stuff, like uh, the novels that deal with like people having sex with spirits and Bigfoot and all that kind of stuff. Like this is one lady, it's like she's made a killing writing mm -hmm. lo love novels, is that what they call them? I can't remember what they call those things, uh, romance books, romance yeah, novels yeah. With, with demons and with Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! I think this sort of, the world definitely needs woken up. So, and it's uh, real, you know. It's, some people might laugh and say, "Oh, the nonsense!" It's real. I did about three radio shows on the very topic of sex with ghosts, and again, I get contacted by people from around the world who had been there themselves, had uh, even been raped by so-called ghosts, uh, and then discovered it was demons that Jesus set them free from it. Um, you know, there, there's stuff going on in the world. The average person, the average Christian, uh, doesn't even know what's really going on. And, and, and pe folks, they need warned. Yes, they do. Well, there's, there's, there, uh, before we end this, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to mention a couple things and then just, uh, we'll pray it out. How's that? Um, first, I want to say thank you. Uh, if, Thanks to you, uh, Bill Bean has been on my show a couple times now and uh, become a brother uh, in Christ and a friend for me. Um, that and I learned about Bill through your your YouTube channel, 
And mm -hmm. then actually next week of you know um, Mark, um, you've been having him. Ah, so Matt Mark Hanneman. Oh wow, I'm so pleased you're going to interview him. Oh gosh, he, there's few people. I think there's few people in the world that talk about um, the truth that that ghosts are demons, and he's one of them. And wow, yeah, I really admire him, and totally, I'm thrilled you're having him on your show. I Absolutely. am too. The guy oh, knows. Yes. He's, he knows what he's talking about. Oh, yes, he does. He does. Seeing, seeing ghosts through God's eyes. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to that. I hope that becomes a, a steady relationship. I hope it did, you and I are able to do a show soon. I know you got a lot going on. But, um, you know, actually, I don't have... Um, you know, now that I think about it, you might be the first gal that I've interviewed in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't have too many sisters in Christ that I uh, talk get a chance to talk to from yeah. from the from uh, your perspective of things, from the female perspective of things. It's always yeah. the male thing, so I really uh -huh. appreciate that. The other thing is, uh, is it okay I'm if I probably use probably from Scotland as well? Actually, the first maybe I'm the first female from Scotland. <laughs> That's true. That's been on your show. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Um, is it okay if I use some of your images from your YouTube and your uh, website? To, for of the, course. For you the know, and pe people sometimes do uh, steal, if you like, video clips and all that and upload it to their own channel. And I do not mind that at all. Um, you know, it's about sharing the truth. It's about helping to set people free. So steal exactly whatever you want from the blog and the YouTube, whatever. Right, and right back <laughs> with you. Right back at you. I mean, obviously, <laughs> none of us that are in this position, what we're doing, are doing it to uh, for fame and fortune, or else, you know, I mean, no. let's face it, you know, uh, we, uh, if you look at the numbers of, of, of subs and views and all that, obviously, we're not, we're, we're just reaching out to God's children, mostly, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that's what it really comes down to, so, and mm -hmm. God seems to, like, inspire folks to find a, a person like you or I. To learn well, something, that's it. you know, Michael, and you know, folks don't don't often realise what our heart is. But for example, all the TV, radio, magazines, whatever that I've contributed to, I've never been paid for any of it. It's it's voluntary work, if you like, really, uh, ministry for me. So yeah, we're not um, out there making millions or, or or anything like it. We live really quite humbly. Um, so yeah, totally. Just just want to see people set free, in Jesus name. You know, my thinking is too is for me because uh, I know what a filthy sinner I am and what a selfish man I am and an egotistical man. And if you know, if I mix the truth with money, the truth is going to go away. The truth, truth is going to suffer. So you know, I it's not worth it. You know, the, the mm -hmm. things that I've learned are priceless. And mm -hmm. I really do believe that God blesses us for not mixing uh, the, His truth with money, and I really do believe that. Now I'm not saying that yeah, there's not other people too. out there that He's has you know uh, other strategies for a living. And as far as you know, you know, if there's a really faithful pastor out there that's really doing his his work and teaching the full truth and is not afraid of losing members and trying to, you know, instead of, you know, if they were, if were truly working for the Lord and not for the building, mm -hmm. <laughs> let's put it that way, that's the way I see. And uh And I know a couple of very good pastors that are ensnared in working for the building, and, and, and they lament about it because they, there was a time, and they remember mm -hmm. that time, and then they, they you know, but they got what they wanted, which is the big church instead of, and then, then they don't know anybody, so they like, I haven't looking out at the audience and there's 500 people and I don't know half, 90% of you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I, I would pray for you all, but I don't even know you. And it doesn't have time to, to, to shepherd all those people. Who does have that time? Yeah. time? But anyways, yeah. my point being, and I'm not knocking them, I, I, I actually pray for them and hope that they, you know, you know, will find, you know, whatever the peace and whatever God wants them to. Maybe God wants them to have a big church. I don't know. But um, yeah, yeah. I know and for we're me... All yeah, we're all different. You know, we're all different and it's easy for us sometimes to make assumptions, but we are all different and, and, and none of us are perfect. We've all got our flaws and so on. 
Um, and it's just, as you say, following Jesus and, and, and trying to do what we feel he's leading us to do. And, yep. Yeah, and so far, you know what, doing this, I mean, uh, you know, God's, God has blessed me in, in ways that I just... I uh, I mean I could just uh, talk over it over you know I mean that's just meeting you Laura it was a, a great blessing and so and that wouldn't have happened if I was going down a different direction so before we end I'm going to pray and then we can mm-hmm. end. okay Almighty mm-hmm. God Almighty God the true living God oh Father what a wonderful God you are what a Another blessing for another day. Another blessing. Thank you, God. Hey, God, you're you're amazing, and I just want to say, um, I, I just don't know what to say except to thank you, and uh, thank you for your only begotten, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who through Him and for Him you created us. And I ask you that you have great mercy on those who are listening to this uh, recording. Uh, that their hearts will be touched and that they will call out to you and our Lord Savior Jesus Christ, crawl for the truth to know who yes. Jesus really is, to have a personal relationship, to find the peace, what joy really means, uh, the meaning, to actually have true meaning once in your life. Uh, I know for me that's the case, and I know for so many others, God. It's only through you that the meaning happens. So, God, I ask you to bless uh, Laura and her ministry, that it will reach many, and many people will be saved. She lives in a part of the world where spiritualism is very big. Maybe, I don't know how big, God, but awfully big. <laughs> Bigger than most churches, maybe the biggest church, I don't know, in Great Britain, God, from my impression. Um, God, help them, free them from the bondage and of, of just being part of a false religion, chasing after demons, being deceived by these things, empty promises that will go nowhere except... Um, there's a lot of pain and suffering in this life and the life to come, God. Um, and just bless everyone that, once again, that listens to this, that they will be inspired and that they will find courage themselves to be warriors and servants for you. For there's no greater privilege. And I say this in my Lord's name, our Lord's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Mm-hmm.